to Alice 130. We have deactivated the banished portal network. Are you in position? Isabel, I wasn't expecting to hear from you. Where's the captain? The Spirit of Fire is under heavy attack from the banished carrier, so he's asked me to be your liaison while he deals with it. You've made quite an impression on the banished down there. We're showing signs of massive troop movement your way. Can you hold out while we're dealing with this attack? Don't worry, Isabel. I've got this one. Good to be working with you. Alice out. All right, troops. Looks like the Banished want to put an end to our fun. The captain's a little busy upstairs, so we're on our own. Spartan, you have Banished incoming. Already on it, Isabel. Push them back, troops. Hello everybody and welcome to the 7th mission of my Halo Wars 2 Legendary Water Guide. Today we're doing the mission from the deep and we have a lot going on so we're going to immediately hop right on into this one. We're going to have Alice over here jump and hijack that wraith. We're going to head over to our base uh, briefly. We're going to grab this generator upgrade, two supply pads, and then the supply pad upgrade. And then we're going to head immediately back over to the fight. Now everybody over here is going to be kind of just focused on taking out... Uh, any infantry we're going to make sure that we get that res uh, restoration drone upgrade and we're also going to make sure this cyclops gets inside of this uh, garrison uh, the main beachhead you're going to make sure that you always keep your two marine two cyclops one marine per garrison as well as a um, as well as a cyclops so you're going to make sure that there's one in each and then you're going to basically once you're done finish like once you're finished with uh repelling the first wave of attacks we get the awesome nightingale which is going to make this mission so much easier so the strategy for this mission is basically just hold each point right you're going to be repelling wave after wave after wave of banished forces that are kind of just trying to take down your base now uh, the idea behind this is make sure that you have a one marine and one cyclops in pretty much every single garrison. The only exception to this, and it's a hellbringer, is in the northern uh, the northern front because there's going to be enemies there that are going to be better for a hellbringer to take down rather than a cyclops. Now, during this time, make sure that you go around, uh, gather all the resources and marines to go uh, take uh, take forerunner towers you're going to want to make sure everything is going on really really quick you don't really have a lot of time before the next wave attacks you i think you have like right around two minutes to get everything going so the beginning part of this mission is probably the roughest part once you get your base settled once you have a good force going once you like get a nice little routine once all that's done this mission is a cakewalk the way that the strategy in this mission goes is you're going to hold each point with a specific counter to whatever is going to be sent over there. So for us over here on the, uh, for us on the west, which is going to be that main beachhead where we fought that first wave, you're going to be basically holding it out with scorpions and nightingales. You're also going to have uh, Alice there with her hijacked locust, which we're going to take over um, in a few moments. We're going to make sure that we grab one of those. And you're also going to make sure that you always keep two Marines and two Cyclops inside of those, uh, inside of those garrisons. It's going to make this, make sure that you repel those beachheads, uh, beachhead assaults much easier. Now to the north, which is just north of your base, is going to be a group of four Wolverines and three Nightingales. You're going to make sure you have four Wolverines, three Nightingales, as well as Marines and Hellbringers there. You're going to make sure that you have that in the north. So you can see here, uh, I'm getting my last Cyclops. Now on the east, which is primarily going to be infantry and uh, and vehicles, you're going to make sure that you have one, one Marine, one Cyclops in the garrison, and then you're going to have two Nightingales and one Scorpion there to make sure that you are able to repel that assault. So here's the first, uh, first wave right after the initial attack. You're just gonna send everybody up to the. Uh, you're gonna send everybody up to the front of the beach. We're gonna make sure that we kind of intentionally later on lose some of these warthogs, 
they're not going to be necessary. You just want to keep them around for now until you have scorpions to be able to substitute them in. Now, making sure that we can go gather all these resources, send these marines here to grab that forerunner tower. Hellbringers go up into the north, as I said, and trying to make sure that we can get at least two nightingales over here because if we don't have that second nightingale, guess what the enemy is going to do? They're going to target down your only nightingale. I mean, they already kind of do that throughout this entire mission. It's kind of annoying. They really, really don't like you having nightingales, but it's even worse and it just makes this, makes it a pain. But that's why you get a lot of nightingales. You're going to have so many nightingales. They're going to be able to do a lot of healing on each other and they're going to all keep each other alive and not to mention restoration drones just make it even more absurd how you're going to be able to survive through each of these waves. Now, the initial part of this mission is a lot of back-to-back -back assaults on the exact same beachhead. So you're going to make sure that you have your forces ready to handle it. Um, when the locusts do show up, you're going to make sure that you use Alice, hijack one of those locusts, get that free thousand score, and then you're just going to keep moving on. Um, Alice never changes her position, by the way. She always stays here. Now, going to get infantry level 1 upgrade, we're going to get vehicle level 1, and then in a few moments we're going to get air level 1. You're going to get all three. This is going to be a perfect tandem of how all three of your rock, paper, scissor uh, concept is going to work out. This is going to be kind of like the ideal scenario for you. Now, we're going to send all of our forces up to go take down these wraiths here. Again, right now, since Alice is in a wraith, she's kind of like the perfect counter. Same with the Scorpion, as well as you have Cyclops all over the place. So it's just non-stop, like you have a counter for everything. Uh, this Cyclops, I didn't really want that. Uh, at a certain point, you're going to start seeing me just kind of like, oh, I didn't need that unit anyway. Uh, like that extra Cyclops, I didn't want to have an extra Cyclops there. Again, like this strategy has a lot of good results, and I want to make sure that we like hone in on what works and you're going to see in a few uh when we have all of our forces up uh how how well this strategy works now send alice she's going to bust out of her wraith take over that locust you're going to send the rest of your forces to go take out this uh this uh this locust over here now that is an easy uh you repel that it's just two locusts the next assault is going to be like six locusts Three going, uh, four going to the north, and then two coming from the west side of that beach. So, grabbing that Wolverine, moving it over. I think we also queued up another, um, another Nightingale to make sure that we have more uh, ability to heal all of our forces. And, and that's kind of like the key to this entire mission is making sure that we have our Nightingales. So here are those uh, six. I think it's six. Six locusts that are attacking that beach. Make sure that you have all your forces. You're going to take it out from uh, bottom left all the way to the top right. That's kind of the path I take, it, uh, and it takes it pretty, uh, fairly, fairly, fairly nice. Making sure we push up. Make making sure that we're not just sitting there getting absolutely destroyed by these locusts. Again, I do want to lose some of these warthogs. Do not worry about it. It's completely fine. This is all intentional. I don't want Warthogs to uh, help me counter uh, basically vehicle killers that the Locusts are as well. I mean, they're going to do a lot of damage to the to my Nightingales as well as my Warthogs. So I want to keep my Nightingales. The Warthogs can, can go away. Um, keeping an eye out. Can get two Marines. We're going to need one more Marine in that, uh, that garrison where that one Cyclops is at. And then once we're there... I think we have a spare. Yeah, we still have that spare marine all the way back at, uh, that did the uh, that did the full runner tower. Okay, we have our next nightingale right there. Gonna get two more nightingales, one more for each area. Get a third one so we can get the eastern flank as well, and then get one uh, wolverine. And that couldn't have been a uh, better time because they are gonna send uh, banshees in a few moments as well. Here they are. And pretty simple, as you guys saw right there. Not anything crazy. Uh, gonna send these Nightingales over there. And we're now at the point where we're gonna be able to get uh, our Headquarter upgrade, which is gonna get our base to Tier 3, which is going to allow us to get Reinforcements Level 2. 
which is kind of what you're aiming for. You want to get to 120 population as fast as you possibly can. Going to send the Nightingale as well as a Scorpion down over to the east side because in about four to five minutes, you'll start to see some enemies uh, head that way. Now, once we have tier three, we can get Scorpions over here, which is, again, why we want to lose some of our... Uh, some of our Warthogs, or actually all of our Warthogs, by the time Tier 3 shows up. Going to make sure that we can repel this attack, so we're going to toss down Restoration Drones. Still waiting for uh, waiting for a Tier 3 upgrade on our base. That way we can get uh, some Scorpions out. Might as well just see if what we can do. We can move this Nightingale over there. And then, now that we have Tier 3, three base we can take our tier uh two upgrades for each of our uh each of our forces so infantry level two air level two and vehicle level two if you are taking a little bit too much damage feel free to micro your nightingales back that is what typically the banshees will do uh, remember the forces in the garrison are kind of there to take the brunt of the attack so just kind of let it happen all right Again, nice, nice and peaceful. Going to get reinforcements level 2 in a few moments. We have our Nightingale as well as our forces over there ready. I'm going to try to see if there's a way we can destroy these Warthogs. Because I would prefer having uh, having Scorpions over here. There we go. We have another Scorpion. Another attack on the north. Five more Banshees. Easy peasy. Gonna go over here, upgrade to reinforcements level two. And there we go. So probably the better idea would have been to take Cyclops over here. Usually I see infantry over here. I think they kinda changed their tactic. Maybe not. Maybe I should have just went full bore on the on the Cyclops, but I mean hey, it's only ghosts, it's not a big deal. And I mean Flamethrowers, like, how often do you actually use them in this camp? Well, we don't really use them that often in this campaign, so it's kind of kind of nice to be able to use them at least for a little bit. All right. Now that we have that, uh, reinforcements level two, queue up a few more scorpions, and kind of just have a little bit of fun with uh, losing these warthogs. And the warthogs actually do pretty well. They actually take down one entire... Uh, an entire locust before they before they die so it's kind of nice queuing up another gonna make sure everybody over here is gonna be taking out those locusts gonna use archer missiles here on these two locusts now typically when you use your archer missiles make sure that you do it the other way this is like the one mistake that i made with those archer missiles i think i make it again later on but you want to bring them to where they micro towards you rather than away from you Going to send all of our uh, scorpions over. Going to get air level 2. Come on. Now here's where that eastern flank attacks, as I said. It's just going to be infantry and maybe a few vehicles like ghosts. Nothing really to worry about. Uh, checking out, we have uh, vehicle level 2 ready to be upgraded. But first things first, we need to get two Marines and our Cyclops. Make sure that we have our forces garrisoned. And then we can pull back. Checking out over here. Looks fine to me. Now initially, the Marines will do a pretty good job at holding out on their own. But the reason why we have that Scorpion is because they're going to start sending like five groups of, of elite Rangers. And they're going to just completely obliterate your Marines. You kind of want to keep them there for... This, the singular purpose of like just making sure that 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 scorpion can take down those elites now we have all of our forces back up to full strength another yet another attack of five banshees to the north still waiting to get air level two and i think vehicle level two is queued up as well now once we upgrade our infantry level two uh air level two and uh vehicle level two then we can worry about fortifying our base, getting logistics, um, pretty much the rest of the stuff that we need. So, still waiting on vehicle level two, it looks like, because we have a, we have a scorpion being uh, built there. 
And then after that, we can get Fortify and Logistics level 1. I'm going to move that tank in front. Going to keep our Nightingale on the back, just in case it gets targeted. In a few moments, we're going to actually send a second one over because you kind of don't want to leave a, a healing unit by itself. Because then if you lose that one healing unit, then you, the rest of your forces don't really have any healing. All right. So that attack over there is not looking too, not looking too threatening. Over here is looking pretty good. Five scorpions. That's going to be pretty, pretty nice. And here's that attack. We have a bunch of ghosts, as I said. And they're going to start setting a lot of elites at you. So here they're actually attacking this nightingale. And this is when I realized, like, huh. This, is, this isn't good. They're kind of taking down my only healing unit, and they're all focus firing it. So I need to kind of back it up with another Nightingale. Backing off, making sure that we all have healing there. Yet another attack in the north from, from those Banshees. Again, it's just kind of repelling it a little at a time. It, again, as I said, it's not really that difficult. You kind of just sit here, wait for the attacks ahead to you. Like, there was... Like, I, I w had previously approached this mission by creating a mobile force and kind of just going to each, like, to each uh, area whenever they attack. But the issue with this is that when you do that, you create a mobile force, you either have to split up your entire force and they're going to be kind of... It, it's going to be kind of weak. Whereas this, you keep yourself dug in the entire time. Yeah, you have forces split up, but you cr intentionally created a dug-in force that is going to immediately be able to repel any any enemies. But yeah, this is kind of what we're going to be dealing with for the for at least the next like three to four minutes because uh, in a few moments we're going to get the final wave of attacks. On the final wave of attacks, they're going to all attack each direction. So once you repel each attack in, like for example, once this eastern and the northern attacks are finished, send all your forces to the beach because we're going to be dealing with the scarab uh, shortly after. Going to make sure that we toss out restoration drones because that's going to counter the glassing beam, which is going to be really, really nice because it's going to just do nothing. Now here's this next attack. Handling it the same way as we always have. Send all your forces up. They're going to send a bunch of locusts as well as some infantry. Your scorpions will make short work. Nothing really to worry about here. You can use your archer missiles if you'd like. I need a marine because they got killed out of that garrison. But once we're finished with that locust, looks like we're just going to kind of chill. We don't need the armor anymore. Might as well get an air pad. I don't know, like I was kind of deciding, but I just said, you know what, an air pad's pretty nice. You get these marines inside of this garrison. Make sure that that garrison is all healed up. Looks pretty good there. Nothing really crazy going on here, except another attack coming from the east. North looking fine. West is good. But yeah, as you guys can see. We're handling everything perfectly fine. Nothing really, nothing overwhelming. I, I would say this is probably one of the missions where you're kind of, kind of just relaxing for a bit once you get off, once you get everything going. Kind of just looking around, make sure all of our forces are ready. I'm gonna have everybody come over here, heal that garrison. Looks like this uh, tank is getting hit by some some elites. More locusts attacking. Time to send all our forces up again. Now, yeah, you could have wolverines over here that could repel this, uh, repel these attacks by destroying the spears before they even drop off any forces. However, I, I kind of disagree with that notion. Like, you need your wolverines stationed over over it where they're currently at dealing with banshees is far more annoying than dealing with some enemies that are just gonna die as soon as they're dropped off waiting for that nightingale so we can reinforce the one that we lost to those locusts keeping everything all nice and checked out making sure that we're ready for anything when it comes up 
And that attack should be happening any minute now. There we go. There's the three-pronged attack. They're going to send everything they got at you. So here's the... Oh, each wave is pretty much exactly how you handled it. So the east is going to be infantry and ghosts. The west is going to be a mixture of vehicles slash, um, slash locusts slash infantry. And then the north is going to be banshees and ghosts. So just have everybody ready. And as soon as you repel it, all those attacks, you're going to send all your forces to the west. So once we repel here, we're going to make sure that we can get rid of some of our forces here. Going to toss down restoration drones on that garrison. And they toss down. That was kind of really unfortunate timing because then they toss down the glassing beam. That means I'm going to have to... Uh, get a few more nightingales, but thankfully we kind of out macroed the damage that they can they can do on us But as you can see here, we got all of our forces moving over So we're gonna send everybody out of their garrison send everybody over to the west and as soon as you finish def As soon as you see that objective send everybody up to the turrets including those in the garrison because they're gonna get shredded by that scorpion uh, by that scarab not that scorpion, but they're gonna get shredded by that scarab so everybody gets out of the garrisons, and everybody pulls back to the turrets. And thankfully, they told us earlier to do uh, anti-vehicle, which is going to be fairly good against this scarab. Now, everybody's going to fall back, let the scarab target the turret, and then send everybody in. Okay. Now, you do a lot of damage to this thing. Now, the Scarab smartly will attack your Nightingales. That is completely okay. Just go over to your air pad, get another Nightingale. Now, there is one little annoying part to this engagement. And that engagement is that they tossed up a shield. But notice how quick we were able to get rid of that shield. So, and again, we have such good macro at this point that we were able to, like, lose three units and still kill that Scarab. We lost three units. Or like four. But who's counting? We lost like a grand total of eight units this entire mission. So. That's pretty much it. That's from the deep on legendary difficulty. Uh, we didn't really deal with much struggle. We didn't lose our entire army like we typically do. In like we have in previous videos. But now we get to kind of just enjoy. This is kind of like the closest thing we can get to a flawless run on uh mish on from the deep but let's take a uh, let's take a look at the scoreboard 157,000 points an easy peasy gold medal with a 90,000 combat score that's crazy but uh, part-time 22 minutes you can probably speed up each engagement a little bit but not too bad in the part uh not too bad in the timing department let's take a peek at the summary in a few moments um as you can see here pretty much every single objective at like just based off of what you can see in the award screen but here you have in the summary screen every single objective has been completed uh hijacking the locust 20 kills with the scorpion everything else but that's it that's uh from the deep on legendary difficulty if you guys like the video please like subscribe comment and share and i'll see you guys next time